everyone, I'm Georgia and this is The Sound of Georgia. Let's talk about Hamilton. You've probably heard the thing about how Hamilton is not actually Alexander's musical, but Eliza's. After all, the show was called Hamilton, and that was her surname too. And as is made clear in the final number, without her we wouldn't have it at all. So whose musical do I think it is? Alexander's or Eliza's? Both. Obviously I have much more to say about this because we still have many minutes left on the video, but I think this question goes deeper than Alexander's musical or Eliza's musical. I think it's also Burr's musical. I think it's also Washington's musical. And Angelica. And King George III. And Jefferson's and Lafayette's. And Lauren's and Phillips. And Hercules Mulligan and James Madison. And Mariah's. And Peggy's. If you were to ask me to describe what Hamilton is about in one word, I would say humanity. It's about how much has changed in the interim 200 plus years. It's about how much is exactly the same. It's about what we are doing with our lives and our desire to be remembered but how we don't really have control over that. And it's about how the story is different depending on who's telling it. That's the one I'm going to be focusing on for this video, so let's talk about Satisfied. Satisfied is probably the most fictional moment in the entire show. I did a video about this but all things considered, Hamilton is pretty historically accurate compared with something like The Sound of Music. It omits more things than it outright changes. And a lot of changes are just shifting the events around on the timeline. And only by a year or two, usually. For example, in Act 2, obviously the songs say no to this, and the room where it happens are back to back. But in reality, those events were switched. The event The Room Where It Happens is talking about was known as the Compromise of 1790. Alexander's affair with Maria Reynolds started in 1791. In the musical, neither of these events have a specific date put to them, but in reality, out of the two events, the affair occurred later. Ergo, the timeline has been swapped. Back to Satisfied. Satisfied is not like that. As you may have heard, Angelica was already married by the time she met Alexander. The Alexander-Angelica relationship is definitely exaggerated in the musical. There definitely seemed to be some flirtation in their letters. The comma thing was real. She was the one who wrote the comma, but it was real. And at one point Angelica wrote this to her sister, quote, If you were as generous as the old Romans, you would lend him to me for a little while. Unquote. Translation, I'm just saying if you really love me, you would share him. Ha! But the musical obviously exaggerates this a bit, leading to Satisfied being pretty much fictional. But even more than being fictional, why does Alexander and Eliza's meeting, courtship, engagement, wedding get two songs? It's not like we don't understand what's happened. The answer? It gets two songs to show exactly how different the same events can be from another person's perspective. The events that happen in Satisfied are exactly what we just saw happen in Helpless. But it's a completely different story because Angelica is the one telling it to us. But that last sentence is the key. Satisfied is very clearly Angelica's song. She's the one who's talking to us, the audience, at that moment. And given the theme of the song, I would argue that at that moment it's not just her song it's her musical. And Satisfied is not the only time this happens. The most obvious example is probably King George, because when he comes on the larger story almost pauses for a moment and we get his little commentary. But in addition to that, it's pretty obvious that Berth, the narrator of the musical, Eliza does come out and do what is essentially the epilogue. But for the most part Burr is the narrator. Sort of. Like Satisfied, many of the other songs are clearly from a specific character's perspective. My shot is obviously the big I want song, so that's Alexander's perspective. Guns and Ships is Lafayette. What did I miss is Thomas Jefferson's. One last time is Washington's. Blow us away is Phillips, etc. Burr is the narrator at large, but specifically when we need exposition. In other words, whenever you hear that dun 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 Last year when I did the video where I sorted the Hamilton characters into Hogwarts houses, I specifically called Alexander the nucleus of the musical, not the protagonist. And this is why. Because the events that we see in the lives of these people are the moments that overlap with his. But the fact that Byrne is very clearly Elijah's response to something Alexander did, that doesn't mean it's any less her song. 
and I think at that moment, her musical. We have one of the biggest themes in the show being perspective. I think that every time we clearly hear a certain character talking, it becomes their musical. Heck, at the announcement at the beginning where King George reminds you to turn your phones off, he says, thank you and enjoy my show. That was a pretty bad impression of Groff doing an English accent. <laughs> so, to finish, is it Alexander's show? Yes. Is it Eliza's show? Yes. But it is also everyone else's. Some parts just focus on a specific character. Alexander is the focal point, both the narrator, with Eliza stepping in to do the epilogue, but everyone is the main character, in my opinion. And that's all I've got for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think. Do you think it's Alexander's musical, or are you in the It's Eliza's musical camp? Do you agree with me? Or do you think I've just made this all too complicated? Let me know. I might not put out a video next week and just focus on doing captions and thumbnails. You may have noticed I've been changing those around a bit. My face will not be disappearing from all of them. So I might just focus on doing that next week and be back with a video the week after next. I hope you're staying safe. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. So long for a while!